Hello everyone, back to in today's first video. We're going to do the ECMWF 30-day uh, forecast for today's first video. Kind of like a four-week uh, look ahead. And uh, uh, for the UK and for the rest of uh, Europe as well. And I shall get on with that for you very shortly. This will be the last uh, one of the year. So I think we'll leave it off uh, next week uh, in the middle of the Christmas week. So um, I don't think we'll do one of these uh, next week. So this will be the final one uh, of the year. I will show you weeks five and six actually with this. It's like a 30 day look ahead, but I might as well show you weeks five and six as we won't be doing the six weeks look ahead on Friday because that, of course, is Christmas Day. Uh, right, so uh, we're at the e7dev.int website uh, for this. Thank you so much, Shaben, uh, for supplying us uh, with these charts, of course. One of the big developments of this year, uh, of 2020, was the uh, release, the data release by ECMWF uh, in October, allowing us to see these uh, charts for the very, very, very first time. Uh, you know, they was only accessible to, like, pro Mets and people who could afford to pay to see them. Um, and the ECMDF.int organisation uh, made all of this data uh, free to all of us. So, so one of the big, exciting developments in the weather world uh, over the past year. And uh, thank you so much uh, to them. Uh, for, for doing this and, and allowing us to access this date, something that we'd all been waiting for for so many years, and this year, 2020, um, it happened. So thank you to them uh, for doing that. Right, OK, so let's get on with this then. I'm uh, going to start off with the week one mean sea level pressure anomaly. It's going to take us through the Christmas week. So this is from uh, the 21st to 28th of December. Pink is extrapolated high pressure, blue to low pressure. So um, week one has high pressure in middle of Atlantic, middle Atlantic ridge with a trough of low pressure covering much of central uh, and western Europe. There's also a ridge over towards um, Northwest Russia, that's Siberian High, of course. Uh, so, jet stream doing something a little bit like that. We're on the cold side of a jet stream across Western Europe, and under this trough of low pressure, it will be turning colder. That's going to be unsettled, so there could be a little bit of a wintry potential in there. The uh, week one 500 millibar height anomaly uh, also backs up the same idea. Again, we've got above average heights extending through the North Atlantic up towards Greenland and the Arctic. A trough of low pressure is across Western Europe. Jet stream plunging southwards, so on the cold cold side of a jet across west of Europe and looking unsettled. Eastern Europe will be milder uh, though because we've got this ridge on the east side of Europe that will bring up like a southerly flow to the east of Europe while the west of Europe will be colder. A little bit different to like the typical setter where eastern Europe tends to be colder and western Europe tends to be mild. This is a bit of a flip on that. So uh, here's a temperature anomaly for week one uh, from the 21st, 28th of December. Looks a bit cold and average around the UK and Ireland. However, most parts of Europe actually are relatively mild, especially northern uh, Europe and also eastern Europe as well. The west of Russia uh, down towards um, Turkey is colder than average through the Med. It's quite a mild scene actually through most parts of the Med in the week. Yep. The precipitation uh, anomaly uh, looks like this. So... Um, Many parts of Northern and Western Europe are wetter than average, actually, from like uh, England and Wales and France, all the way up to Scandinavia and over towards Western Russia. It's a bit, a, a bit wetter than average, as it says. The Mediterranean looks quite dry, especially around Spain and Portugal and in the southeastern corner of May too. And sort of Eastern uh, Europe from like uh, the Adriatic and the Balkans to the Black Sea um, looks a bit uh, above average precipitation through there. Right, that's week one done. Let's have a look at week two then. This is going to take us uh, from the 28th of December to the 4th of January. So I've uh, got a nice mid-Atlantic ridge here going up to Greenland. So it looks like we've got pretty extensive lawn blocking. That high pressure is also sending back to a Siberian high. Low pressure across uh, Central and Western Europe. So again, very blocked. These are very blocked charts. And you think certainly in the west of Europe, we'd be pulling in like cold winds from the north and uh, from the northeast. Again, could be a little bit milder over on the eastern side of Europe with more of a southerly influence. The week two uh, 500 millibar high to normally taking us through the new year. Looks pretty mouth-watering if you want cold weather, I have to say, across Western 
uh, Europe. So again, we've got this uh, blocking feature through the North Atlantic going back to the Arctic and into Greenland. Low pressure is through the west of Europe. It looks like we should be pulling in the winds from like a northeast direction. So potentially cold and wintry across many uh, sort of western parts of Europe. Eastern Europe looks like it would be milder with winds more from a southerly direction. Week 2 temperature anomaly uh, shows an east-west split. So many eastern parts of Europe coming out milder than average, especially from like uh, Ukraine to the Black Sea. Uh, milder than average through there, but colder than average in the west of Europe. Anywhere from Denmark and Germany westwards, forecast to be colder than average. Ireland, UK, France, Spain, Portugal, colder than average through all of those uh, areas. Scandinavia is uh, a little bit colder than average towards Norway. Milder than average when we come towards the Baltic uh, areas and, and light um, into the northeast Europe. Mediterranean-wise, east-west split is also in evidence. So uh, Italy westwards is colder than average. Italy eastwards, particularly through Greece and Turkey, uh, milder than average through there. Week 2 precipitation anomaly from the 28th of December to 4th of January. Uh, looks like this. So uh, much of the Mediterranean looks very wet, particularly so um, around Italy and uh, over the Asiatic into the Balkans, significantly above average rainfall through there. So it's probably going to be low pressure down through the Med. That could be because the jet stream being forced southwards by the blocking. Of course, driving average to the north and to the west, and near norm precipitation through those central parts of Europe. Right, move on to week three then. This is the fourth through to the 11th of January. Still looking blocked. Look at this. We've got high pressure again from Greenland and Iceland, right way over to Scandinavia and Russia. You will think that's going to be bringing in like a lot of easterly winds. Low pressure is generally covering much of southern Europe. Presumably the jet stream is down here. And uh, yeah, so it looks like it should still be cold really for, for much of northern and Western Europe, actually. The week three, uh, 500 millibar height anomaly still looks blocked. Uh, high pressure through the North Atlantic, through Greenland, back towards Scandinavia. Low pressure through Southern Europe. Winds again are uh, in from the east. Very, very mouth watering charts for anybody who likes cold weather. Week three temperature anomalies uh, look like that. So cold of an average all the way from like Western Russia right way over to uh, uh, UK and Ireland. So, so you can see that the east winds are going to be bringing the cold air out of Russia and pushing them into the west of uh, Europe. Um, southeastern uh, Europe, so the Balkans down in towards Greece, Turkey still continues to be mild on average free bears. Northern Scandinavia looks a little bit mild on average, and of course it's because of the uh, northern blocking. The week free precipitation anomaly from the 14th of January. Uh, North-South split, really. So, so much of Northern Europe is drier than average. That's where we've got the blocking, of course. But remember, because it's cold, any precipitation it does fall here on these east winds is going to be primarily snow. Um, Southern Europe is wetter than average, all the way from Spain and Portugal, right way to uh, Greece in the east. And again, that's probably because the jet stream is being forced south was via the non blocking which pushes uh, the jet south right week four is the 11th to the 18th of uh, january the blocking signal is weakening slightly here so we do, do still have some non blocking with normal latitudes but certainly weaker as we're moving into the middle part of january looks like the low pressure from the south is starting to move a little bit further northwards so the low pressure is trying to push up from the south return us to a more typical type pattern as a blocking eases. Of course, that might involve snow uh, as, as we bring uh, low pressure up from the south and from the southwest. The 500 bit of our height only uh, looks like this for week, f uh, week 4, 11th to the 18th January. Again, blocking is still there, just a little bit weak with the lower pressure, just trying to come a little bit further northwards into northern and western parts of Europe. Week 4 temperature only still looks rather cold, really, for either the UK and Scandinavia anyway. Still cold on average through there. Mildest in the southeast of Europe. Otherwise, there isn't all that much of a signal in most parts of Europe in week 4 for temperature anomaly. Precipitation anomalies uh, show that the driest conditions are just easing that bit further northwards. So, so the dry weather is just easing a bit further northwards. 
Very weak signals for most parts of Europe. Above average rainfall precipitation in the far east and southeast of Europe. And probably a little bit more unsettled across some northern western parts of Europe as well. Although it is a weak signal. As this is like the last uh, one of these that we'll be doing this year. I will bring you on for weeks uh, 5 and 6. So just have a very quick look at those. So this is a week 5 means sea level pressure anomaly. Uh, with uh, again what looks like a, a re-establishment of a little bit more of a westerly flow. I think the blocking is easing in the second half of January. So becoming uh, milder. I would have thought is a signal for the second half of January. But of course, this is all very a uh, long way out. It's five weeks away. Um, these models will always try to return us to the default setup, which is, of course, westerly uh, for the north for the Atlantic and Northern Europe. The default setup is always going to be westerly. And these models will always try to get back to that. Uh, even though the ECM is like the best, is one of the best anyway, uh, even that will try all the time to get us back to westerly. So how soon as we take this, I don't know. But it is a signal that it's going to take half of January. We're trying to see a re-establishment of the, the westerlies and turn milder. See the tension on is beginning to uh, lift up there in week five. Turning milder and also presumably uh, turning wetter as well, although it doesn't really show that. Uh, particularly. Uh, and then week six uh, looks like this. this week six um, means there pressure on it from 25th January to the 1st of February. Wow, long way out. And again, really weak signals, but the blocking is gone. Uh, we've got low pressure to our west and to our north, so the jet stream looks like it's pushing uh, northwards once again. The 500 millibar height anomaly uh, for 25th of January to 1st of February looks like that. So um, it is trying to return to milder weather. The blocking is just going week by week in second half of January. No pressures are out to the west. Jet stream is pushing northwards. Um, got some ridging across uh, central Europe. That's going to be bringing up like mild southwest winds. So second half of January, definitely signals to turn milder here. Uh, temperature noise is uh, lifting up across most parts of Europe. Um, and the uh, finally week uh, six precipitation anomaly. Again, very weak signals. So you see, you can clearly see what's going on uh, with this. We've got a lot of blocking and uh, potentially uh, some really cold weather to come through the next uh, sort of three to four weeks. Uh, across most of northwestern Europe, and, and, and it could get really quite wintry at times, especially as we go through the first half of January. Uh, I think from mid January onwards into the second half of the month, there's clearly uh, a reduction in northern blocking. Low pressure comes back in the Atlantic, we lift the jet stream back northwards again, and we start to turn milder, but also probably more unsettled across western Europe uh, and wetter as we come in second half of January. Um, again, how soon as we take that? Uh, it's weeks five and six. Uh, these models will always try to re-establish the zonal flow, as I say, and return us to the default, which is westerly. So, so we shall just have to see how it plays out. But we have got a lot of very, very interesting weather to get through before we have to worry about that anyway. So um, definitely like over Christmas, New Year, and probably uh, the first week or 10 days at least of January, uh, we're talking about significantly uh, cold weather for much of Northern and Western Europe. And within that, there will be the chance of some snow as well. This is going to be the final uh, ECMWF extended look ahead of the year. I think we'll leave these off until we get into January. So, um, so, so yeah, that's the last one uh, of this year. But they will return as we get into uh, 2021. Uh, I make sure you want to turn the charts in the regular 10 to 14 day video uh, updates though. Um, but but uh, yeah, that's it for like this year. We're going to be out later on with your 10 to 14 day, including all our regular features. I made your ensembles watch for you tonight. Uh, for this one though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.